my name is Aaron Letso. Uh, I brought um, project name AMK1, named after my sister, but I entered it under uh, a joke name, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So that's what shows up on the ballot. Um, a little bit about it. I, I, the original idea was to um, use a low bass shelf tuning. At least that's what it, it's been called historically. Most people do it with subwoofers. I wanted to do it with a mid bass and try and get it to play down into the low 40 hertz. Um, so it's tuned, you know, five or six hertz below where it probably should be. But um, you know, that that creates sort of a shelf in the in the low end response. I gave up about three dB, but I doubled the number of woofers, so I got that back. And originally the design was supposed to be passive, um, but the realization of that shelving filter in order to you know, take that added sensitivity and get the uh, broadband frequency response above where that shelf begins back down to nominal, that didn't really work out. So I went uh, active with it, um, wound up boosting about 3 dB at the low end. Um, but I didn't do anything crazy to shape the low end response of the driver. Um, so it, it, it digs into the low 40s. Um, it uses a Fital HF 108 as a com uh, compression driver made into a Fital Tritrix horn. Um, they cross over around 1500 hertz. And uh, I had selected the, um, the mid bass driver based on its size. I did some simulations on the horn before beginning any construction and kind of figured out, okay, this is the directivity of a woofer that I need to match to this horn right around where I think it will cross over. It wound up working very well. Um, Off-axis response uh, is very smooth. I designed around the horizontal directivity, so there's no notches or anything like that. It just rolls off quite very smooth. Um, those horns are so freakishly efficient that I'm padding the HF by 17 dBs to get it back down to the nominal level of the woofers. Um, it's, I ran into some noise issues with that because they're so sensitive that I was taking the level of the input signal and the DSP down, but I was not doing that at the amps. The amps running at Unity and there's so much noise coming out of it because it's so freakishly efficient. I actually had to take the attenuation out of the processor and um, I put a uh, 17 dB uh, voltage divider over the over the tweeter, um, so I'm doing that attenuation passively, and that makes these things almost silent on on an amp with a high low noise floor. Um, uh, in in the past, I think I've had very good scores sonically, but I would continuously bring rectangles with speakers. Or, sorry, yeah, rectangles with speakers in them. So they're relatively boring to look at. Uh, I wanted to step that up this year and make something a little bit more of a sculpture. So I stacked two rectangles on top of each other instead and put a horn in the middle. My name is Perry Marshall. My subject is the bourbon barrel subwoofer satellites. And they started when a friend of mine helped me with a business project and I wanted to do him a favor. So I built him a bear of speakers. His name is Brandon and I channeled Brandon. If, if Brandon was a speaker, what kind of speaker would Brandon be? And I thought, well, Brandon loves bourbon. I think Brandon would be a bourbon barrel speaker. So I made, uh, I, I bought a bourbon barrel, an 18 liter small bourbon barrel, and I put an eight inch sub with a port in it. And for the satellites, I bought staves from actual bourbon barrel casks and I made the front and back panels of the satellites out of staves. So they're 34 inches long. That's how long they come. So that's how tall the speakers are. And they are back loaded horns with a tang band three and a half inch driver. And the, the exit is at the bottom of the satellite. And the purpose that serves is most of the output of the speaker below a thousand hertz actually comes from the horn, not the driver. And that gives it about three times more air movement than what the driver can do by itself. That's about 10 decibels of dynamic range. And so the, 
The horn is tuned to 130. They're crossed over at 120 with a digital signal processor. And then the subwoofer is equalized uh, also to, to match uh, the loading of the cabinet. And uh, so I put these together and my wife's best friend came over and she looked at those and she flipped out. She says, those are awesome. Can you make those for John for Christmas? And John's our very good friend. And so I'm not in the speaker building business, but I love John. And, and so I did a system for John too, and it was his Christmas present. And so these are totally unique. And uh, bourbon barrel casks are, they're leaky. So you have to, you have to, compensate for that and fill up the holes uh, it's a great um, it's made of they're, they're made of oak and it's a great material acoustically they look great they sound great they're non-resonant really happy with the horn design and there's a three-quarters inch dome tweeter on the back that fills in ambience and I, I think it really complements the tang band driver nicely very happy with these speakers Hi, uh, my name is Charlie Laub. I brought a project this year called Cones of Flapping. Uh, this is a minimalistic baffle or no baffle kind of loudspeaker. It has a dipole radiation pattern and um, that gets around a lot of issues with box resonances and other things. Uh, you can get very clean sound. Um, it's sort of an evolution of uh, designs I've made in the last couple of years and um, kind of up the driver quality in this design. Uh, previously, I've used subwoofers for the lowest, like 80 hertz and below, and now I'm using um, all open baffle type drivers. Um, the woofers are four eight inch um, Satori woofers um, from SP Acoustics. Um, the mid-range is also a Satori mid-range, and there's an AMT tweeter from Orm Cantus. It's crossed over at two kilohertz and uh, the woofers are at 300 hertz. And um, I drove this with some uh, Class D amps and um, some DSP that I do in software on a computer. I write all this code for doing that. Uh, I developed some special filters. It's a bit complicated to cover right here, but um, it sounded great in my house. Unfortunately, it had a few technical problems uh, today, but uh, hopefully the people got a good sense of how they can sound this kind of system. Hi, I'm Ivan Kutcher. I um, entered some speakers that I built by my own hand, solo, uh, for this uh, glorious uh, tournament here. <laughs> um, I'm honored to be here. I built uh, a 34 inch tall, uh, small, short cabinet that uh, I've downsized actually t two times from being over six feet tall. Uh, four separate sealed chambers. It was kind of complicated, but it was too big for the RV life, so I downsized to a, a smaller version with double subs, and that was still eh, 150 pounds a piece. So third attempt, this is Rover number three. Rover because we're going to be on the road traveling. Rover because Led Zeppelin has a great song called The Rover. And um, uh, uh, Rover because we're going to be living the RV lifestyle moving. So it's got a, uh, the sub is a 10 inch Almani dual voice coil, uh, very inexpensive. Uh, both, both subs were only like $70. Um, the 10 inch coaxial eminence woofers in the upper chamber passive uh, system, full range system is um, it's cost me about 90 a piece. And then it's uh, got a two inch uh, voice coil, uh, dual com uh, a compression horn, excuse me, mid range, a PRV, um, cost me about 75 for both. And uh, the front tweeters are cheap uh, Piezo uh, GRS. They cost me like 15 bucks for the pair, but they were, they were sufficient. The rear tweeter is a, uh, a sitting in a, approximately this level um, for reflective purposes. Um, it's a, it's a rear-mounted 108 decibel compression uh, tweeter driver, and it's uh, made so that when you close your eyes, you can't quite point to where the speakers, where the sound's coming from, and it seems to work. Plenty of bass, um, seeing that I downsized from a double sub version, 
but it's plenty of bass for me. And then I've been a drummer for f over 40 years, so I'm music. I mean, I'm pretty deaf and all. So I kind of really don't know if I'm hearing what I'm supposed to because of these hearing aids, but people tell me they sound good, which pleases me. The whole project ended up costing me about 1600 uh, between the ba the plate amps on the back and all the drivers, the crossovers are Electro Maven uh, three-way, um, just off the shelf. The crossover frequencies are rather high. They're 24, 25, no, 2600 um, for the woofer to mid and 4500 for the tweeter. And uh, they weigh about 80 pounds a piece. And uh, they're made of three-quarter inch thick um, uh, melamine board that's like uh, formica they're bulletproof they can't be scratched I demonstrated that in there I took my keys and said you can't hurt them they're bulletproof and and I'll just tie them to the sides of the RV and if they fall over I don't care they were fun to build and I'm sure they'll last as long as they were hopefully designed to and uh, the music's great I love the Zeppelin and Floyd and it's great so I'm Joe Krushke. I designed the Big Blue Satins and the White Bookshelf speakers. Sorry. And I started out with the Blue, the blue Satins, just kind of saying I want a reference system for myself that's full range, something that gets down to about 30 hertz. The driver's F10, I believe, is like 28 hertz, so it's more than sufficient there. Um, just started out learning how to build a box, learning how to damp it, learning how to add whatever materials I used in there learning where to place braces, and then learning how to make like crossover changes to the uh, box. Oh, I ended up changing tweeters about three quarters of the way through because I didn't like the way it sounded, and then I ended up blowing one, so it was easier to change out to a different brand and ended up liking it a lot more as a result because of the frequency response. Um, the 15-inch Classic Woofer did a pretty good job for what it's capable of doing. I mean, it's plenty loud enough in a house, so I'm content with that. Hi, I'm Michael Higinian. I'm delighted to be at the Dayton Audio Parts Express speaker competition once again this year. Last year I brought Bellasonus 1, and this year I brought Bellasonus number 3. So this is an iteration and it's a much larger and better looking and better sounding speaker. So this one has, a, uh, this is in the unlimited class because it has a three-way upper section with a nice crossover, and then in, in the lower section, in a separate section, we have a 10-inch powered subwoofer. And so, out of this, I now get lots of bass. And this is a really, this is from uh, 23 up to 24,000 kilohertz. So this, this speaker has a wide range. It's a, it's a really nice, and I've tried two different tweeters and three different mids, and finally got it to sound the way I would like. So I'm real proud of this speaker. And um, I just enjoy building these speakers. Um, it's hard to say how long they take, pretty long, but typically what I do is if I uh, come home from the office and I got an hour or two, then I can just go in my workshop and do a little bit. And, and so I do a couple hours here and there, and it's almost like found time. Because instead of just waiting for dinner or doing something, you know, just to pass the time, if, if I have some spare time, I just go do this. And uh, it's amazing. After about six months to, to nine months, I have a speaker done. And so it's, a, it's an enjoyable thing for me to um, just sort of keep occupied all the time. I guess I got a little bit of ADD, and I like to be doing something every moment. So this is something I can, I can go to whenever I want. It's my own workshop, and if it's messy, it doesn't really matter. Oh, I have a Bellasonas 4 and a Bellasonas 5. So it's coming along real, real well. It's interesting. Every time you build a speaker, you think of more things you'd like to try the next time. So that's kind of, kind of the shape I've, I've been in. And... Uh, it's very, very interesting to keep trying and learning, and I like talking to the other people here and, and, and just learning from them. What do they like? What have they learned? And uh, it's, uh, it's fun to, to do that. So it's part of, my, part of the enjoyment. It's a combination of woodworking, electronics, because I have all the gear, and then building crossovers, and acoustics, because when you have your room, you need to treat your room so that it'll sound good. So when you get all of those things right, it's magical. Hi, this is Perry Marshall. My project is the Live Edge Birch Dipoles, which have an 18-inch eminence woofer, an 8-inch radian coaxial mid-range tweeter uh, with a constant directivity horn matched to the 8-inch driver. And uh, they are crossed over 
at 202,000. They have a digital signal processor. And because of the combination of the constant directivity mid-range tweeter and the open baffle base, they are constant directivity across the entire band. And that means, practically speaking, that when you point them in an equilateral triangle in the room, every seat in the house is good. The stereo imaging is great everywhere in the room. You can even stand right next to one speaker and you can hear the other speaker clearly. You can hear a good stereo image spread between the speakers. Very few other speakers can do that. There's almost no such thing as a full range constant directivity design. Uh, they also have a ambience tweeter on the back. To my ear, open baffle speakers never sound right when the lower end is open baffle and the upper end is unidirectional. So I have bass and trouble going both directions. That just sounds better. Um, they have linear phase response, linear impulse response, linear step response. They are completely written up in the January 2021 issue of Audio Express if you want to see the plans. Uh, or you can search Birch Dipoles Perry Marshall and you'll find those plans on wine. And uh, 95 dB sensitivity. Uh, they can play very loud with not very much power. They can handle a lot of power. And depending on how you EQ them, in a small room, they'll go down to about 25 or 30 hertz. Uh, if you want to play really loud music and you have a bigger room, they'll go down to about 35 or 40. And that's just a choice of how you uh, do the DSP compensation. I put finite impulse response filters in the DSP uh, so that I could compensate for all the phase errors. And so I don't know of other speakers that are linear phase, linear frequency response, and constant directivity across the whole band. And uh, they were made with birch. I went to Big Red Sawmill in Palmyra, Nebraska, picked out a couple of slabs of birch, carted them to Chicago, had my carpenter, Seth Cothran, build them. And I think they're beautiful. A lot of people think they're beautiful. And a live edge slab of wood is a great way to do an open baffle design.